I ain't made it though. This is for my people. Locker room speeches. Listen while I'm teaching. Nails trying like a kiss. Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a re-up. Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it. Now we building assets before we splurge our cash. We was talking about the dream, dog. We heard y'all laugh. Now they talking about the team and I heard y'all last. I can never take the credit. I prefer all cash. Look, laughing at the crib because I done turned into a bank. Probably turned into a mogul before I turned into a saint. Was just a man on his grind and I turned it into great. Turn my struggle into hustle and you know I'm getting paid. Let's go. Welcome back to the Private Banker Society show. My name is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs. It's Big Mogul. Oh, he Big Mogul today. Oh, y'all, so because I told Mogul I was proud of him and he's doing a good job producing the show, he now he want to be Big Mogul. Okay. okay. I'll give it to you today, Big Mogul. Appreciate it. ICDC College Mogul. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Shannon. I'm a better producer than you. All, All right, right, so Mogul, you already know. So y'all already know how to how to how to uh, how the name of the show uh, goes. We're talking about business, finance, hot topics. Um, you know, Mogul's a shot caller. So Mogul, talk to us. What's, what we got going on? So if we have to start with a f- word of the day. It's called quotidian, and it means daily. So uh, bored with his quotidian gym routine, he started trying new workout formats. So we're gonna try to use this word at least. Uh, once each uh, in this podcast, we can't do it. It is what it is, but hopefully you use it in your lifetime. What's that again now? Quotidian. 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 Bored with quotidian gym routine. Oh, daily. Bored daily. with daily gym means, routine. So, oh, okay. So it means daily. Quotidian. Quotidian. This is the quotidian. So originally you were talking about having the PBS okay. show quotidian. as a quotidian. As a quotidian. A, a, quotidian a quotidian show. show. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> quotidian. Okay, all right. See, we're quotidian. gonna learn you some. We're gonna learn you some. We're gonna learn. All right. Sorry. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, welcome to the Private Banker Society show. Throughout the show, if yeah, you hear yeah. anything you like, make sure you hit the like button. Share it with somebody you care about because they'll love you tomorrow. I promise. What we got going on today, Mogul? So we're gonna jump right in. Today's hot topic, we're going to go really stay on here uh, for most of the show because it is a huge, um, it's really huge for us, basically. It's Chase P. Morgan Chase. Uh, on Thursday, they shut down the website for college financial aid platform called Frank that they acquired for $175 million. Um, and they allegedly got... Allegedly. <laughs> They got frauded out of it by the, the young founder who founded um, Frank. So her name is Jace. Um, and what happened was, from what we've seen, she basically told them that they had over 4.2 million um, active users on the platform, um, that they were helping out so many people. But when um, JP Morgan got a hold of all the emails and all the, the lists, they found out that 4 million of those names are fake. Wow. Um, they also found out that she was taking some money for her own uh, as a personal interest as well. Um, and we'll go into it, but she's like counter suing for some other things as well, saying that they were making these allegations up so they wouldn't have to keep her on her, her $7 million retainer uh, and pay her her $20 million. Mm. So they, so they, so, so um, I wanted this topic uh, to be. Uh, on our hot topics because I think it's important for us to recognize that there's a couple of things I want to recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, just because these people work for these big companies, right? Um, and just because they got these big MBAs and <laughs> PhDs and um, most of these people running these companies um you know, uh, you know, getting into these big institutional businesses, they go straight out of college right into, like, that world. So they don't really know <laughs> the true ins and outs of really building a company from scratch, really, um, you know, creating value from scratch, knowing the wolf was from the shakers. And then last but not least, another point that I want to bring up is that even if you are good, 
at doing due diligence. Your ego and your ambition can have you blind to a scam that's right in front of you. Now, this is alleged. We don't, well, you know, they're saying this and they're saying that it's not accurate. They're saying that it's not true. Um, what she's saying, she's saying it's not true, right, Mogul? Yeah, she's saying basically that um, that they they're, knew they're coming up with this. They they already knew what was going on when she showed them the uh, the reports and stuff. Um, but they're saying, of course, what she said and what is uh, they found out through emails because she not only hired a, uh, somebody, she hired a professor to make the fake accounts. So like uh, professor what? in uh, yeah, social uh, engineering, like dude she, that's good at social was, science, like on using computers. Wow. Yeah. So so here, but here's the deal, right? Um, I believe both sides personally. I believe from her side, if you're selling a business, it is the person who's acquiring the company's job to do true due diligence. You're not supposed to do the due diligence for the actual business owner. You're not supposed to do due diligence. I mean, for the person who's wanting to acquire your business, it's the person who's acquiring the company's job to slow walk that thing to ensure that the company is exactly who they say it is, why they say it is and the customers and the students and the accounts are all as accurate as they say that it is. And so the, the, this is the piece of purchasing and acquiring companies that a lot of people don't really understand. So I know, you know, y'all hear us all the time. We talk about acquisitions. It's easy to start a company that already exists versus starting a company from scratch, especially if you have those 12 skill sets we talk about in the PBS Dollar Club and also, uh, you know, the basic underlying uh, uh, a product evaluation and market evaluation, basic, you know, skill sets. It is still <laughs> the job and responsibility of the acquis the person who's in charge of acquisitions, acquiring that business to ensure to do due diligence. And so it, it's in my opinion that the lawsuit is, is kind of like your team didn't do a good job of doing due diligence and you mad because when you purchased the asset, it was bad or it wasn't as good as you thought it was. Or your ego got so much uh, uh, of you that you couldn't even imagine the fact that you would have got swindled at that high level. And so let me ask you this question, Mogul. Are they saying that she has to pay back the money or they just don't want to pay the $7 million retainer plus the, re the remaining of the $20 million? Um, at the present moment, she's saying that they just didn't want to pay the twenty million, and they didn't want to pay the retainer. But I uh, do believe when I was looking at it, they said that she needs to pay that money back. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Wow. Because if it was vice versa, if 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 a bank like J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the world, the largest bank in the world, um, were to fund us acquiring a company, right? And if we were to acquire a company and to find out that that company was not who we thought it was or who they said that they were, J.P. Morgan would not care if we got frauded. J.P. Morgan would tell us, you didn't do your due diligence. You didn't follow through. You didn't execute. You didn't audit it right. Mm -hmm. That's on you. I still want my money that I finance you. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. But it's quite funny how when the shoe is on the other foot, the bank don't like to get played. And that's the problem that I have with banks. They're one-sided. They got JP Morgan. It, it, it just seemed like like every three months they in the headlines with some allegations or some, some them, mess they got going on. Them and Wells Fargo allegedly. Allegedly. They... <laughs> Allegedly, they, they might be in cahoots. You, you know, you got, always got to say allegedly. 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 It's alleged that they, 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 for them to have that many fake names and to literally not be wanting to take any accountability for that on their part, it's crazy to me, especially like, you, like the example you just gave. If it was on us, they would have put all that blame on us. It don't seem like that the banks want to take any accountability on either side of the coin. Yeah, but but it, but it also goes to Iggy, where you know how we always talk about skills pay the bills, and these people that were doing the due diligence for J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. they clearly dropped the ball, mm -hmm. and that goes to experience. And I want everyone that's paying attention to me right now. I want you to hear something. 
just because they work for a big institution, just because they have access to capital more than you right now, it does not mean that they are better than you. Do you hear me? Mm. Just because their name is in the likes, they're currently in Forbes, they're being put on the cover magazine. Listen, scammers get put on magazines every day. People that's getting propped up and edified get put on these platforms every day. But don't you go doubting yourself because you're not where you think that you should be because these other deals are happening because clearly big companies like JP Morgan dropped the ball to as well. And that, and, and that's the biggest piece that I wanted to kind of bring mm -hmm. out that capital alone doesn't solve your problem. So I know a lot of you like, okay, Jake, I want to go acquire companies. I'm ready to do this thing. You told me to go acquire. I got access to funding. I got my capital. I got, you know, I got my good credit. I'm going to go get invested. I want you to imagine something, right? Imagine you don't get fully trained on doing due diligence on finance, on the financials of the business, the ins and outs of the business. You don't know how to do screenings. You don't know how to look at departments. You don't know how to determine legitimate accounts versus illegitimate accounts. Imagine if you started a private equity fund. Imagine if you raised a uh, uh, $20 million. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you went to the bank and got two or three million to go and buy this dud asset only to find out that it's wrong, but you still got to pay everybody back. Because you skip steps. And J.P. Morgan, the horn is on you. You skip steps. And you would not give anybody the benefit of the doubt if they made mistakes. So why should we give you the benefit of the doubt when you drop the ball? And as far as I can say right now, uh, Javis said, hey, listen, y'all knew the deal. Facts. Y'all saw the accounts. Y'all got trillions of dollars of access to the best auditors in the world and y'all miss this take this l and i hope that the judge sees it that way and the judge grants javis all of the rest of her money because that's how i feel about that topic listen Period. listen listen dr jake uh and then what they I, do I the ladies like be like well, bring it back to me go to one they say period <laughs> so Listen, you've been this, these past couple shows. You've been feeling yourself. I think it's a suit. This is second time now. This second show in a row. You done put this suit on. Hey, listen. And you got your little fancy pin on on your lapel oh, you over there. You talking about this right here? You talking about this? Over yeah. Here? What, what's that, doctor? Uh, this pin is my HBCU Wiley College. I want to give a shout out to all the HBCUs HBCUs out there, especially um, my college, Wiley College, that I got my undergrad from. Um, and especially those HBCUs that's giving colored people a chance to get some quality education, um, that's giving them a chance to get indoctrinated in, in, in degrees in areas and fields um, that are valuable. Because uh, most people don't know HBCUs produce um, dang near 50 percent of the engineers mm. uh, in the uh, in the United States of America. Um, this is a, it's a very important thing. Um, you go to doctors and teachers, HBCUs produce the most doctors, engineers, and teachers. And so I just want to give a shout out to my HBCU Wiley college and all the HBCUs out there, because if it were not for you, a lot of us wouldn't have the chance to actually get the education that we need. And when I was, when I was at Wiley college, this was the first university when I transferred to Wiley, this was the first university that told me you are more than just playing basketball. When I went to predominantly white institutions, they wanted me to shut up and play ball. When I went to Wiley College, they say, you are more than ball. That was the first institution that told me that I could do something great. It is, it is my opinion that if it wasn't for my institution, Wiley College, who has, that it was grossly underfunded. If it was not for my HBCU, I probably wouldn't be in the position I am in today. And I want to give a shout out to Dr. Ajanga that is currently, uh, she's currently at Jarvis Christian University, um, a Jarvis Christian College, um, as the head of education there. I believe that she's there. I hope I'm not giving them a shout out when they don't deserve it. But <laughs> Dr. Jenga, if you're watching, I want to say that I love you because you looked me in my eyes and you told me that I can get into Johns Hopkins University even when I doubted myself. You told me that I could be great. I could potentially be the president of the United States. Wow. Well, the pres president of the United States didn't happen. I probably don't want that position. But I did get accepted into Johns Hopkins University when I graduated college. I did do my semester there. I quit, but you said I could do it. And I became everything that you told me I could do. So just because of you, I want to give you a shout out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that that make a whole lot of sense, man. And uh, I guess I should say, you know, shout out to Wallet College as well because I get to sit next to uh, 
uh, well educated, well educated uh, brother, black brother like yourself. Um, so that explains a lot these past two episodes. Come man. on, man. You know, I'm just you know you know I got to a point, Iggy, where a, a, a line has to be drawn in the sand. Line has to be drawn in the sand. Mm-hmm. One, one, whether we want to believe it or not, image matters. Correct. Um, and when you're talking about where we're going, where we're, we've, we, we as a company has ma- have made the commitment to go. Mm-hmm. There is a commitment. There, there is a uniform <laughs> that you have to adopt. For an example, I see so many people online, especially influencers. You can wear this. You can wear that. You can do whatever you want and build your, okay. That may be true to people that are privileged. But let's be clear. When you play football, you can't go out there in hockey gear. When you play basketball, you can't go out there in football gear. Mm. And when you play hockey, you can't go out there in basketball gear. And darn so when you play golf, you can't go out there in soccer gear. Mm. Every game has a uniform. Now, you can splice it up. You can jazz it up. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day... If you want to be taken seriously in the industry that you are in, you have to participate in the uniform that's required of that level. Mm-hmm. Now, when you make it in that industry, playing that game, and you got a name for yourself, then you can kind of alter the perception of what you wear and how to do it. But I want to tell all of you out there that's trying to get to your next level, listen. I don't care what anybody says. When they say never judge a book by its cover, uh, they lying to you, and those people are probably underachievers that are mad that people judge books by their cover. Because within 20 seconds, all of us come to a judgment about somebody, some person, some place before we get to the substance. Uh, there was a place that, um, that Ignacio, uh, myself, Amir, and Jig, we were in. Where were we at when you took us to that uh, that real sketchy place, uh, 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 mogul? Lotus in Houston. Lotus in Houston. Lotus in Houston. If you're the owner of that uh, that that place, I just want to say I apologize, but I got to tell the truth. Mm. Y'all's ratings were off the charts, according to mogul, but the location didn't give me off the charts vibes, so I didn't even give it a shot. Right? That's yeah. the truth, right, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't e- I wasn't even I wasn't even open for conversation. Now Mogul, he's out like, this is good. The reviews are good. Let's try it. Me? No. This area look dangerous. So for me, I made a judgment and I probably passed one of the best restaurants I could have ever tasted. But I was willing to do that because it was not up to par. Because also, and also because of the other stores and restaurants that were beside it in that shopping center. Mm -hmm. It looked sketch. And so I came to a judgment in that moment. Just the same way y'all come up to the judgment of a moment when you see a sister or a brother dressed in a particular way, whether it's positive or negative, you come to an assumption in that moment who they are, what they represent. That's why... If you ever look at ambassadors of countries, they always have to be considered modest and conservative because they're in representation of that country, a.k.a. that company that's the country. (laughs) Could I see countries as companies? Because you're in representation of. If Donald Trump were to go uh, uh, when he was a president or Obama, were to go to these other countries in beat sandals, <laughs> a beat shirt, and some short shorts. With a hat with a little spin on the top. With a spin <laughs> on the top with the hat. No matter how intellectually savvy, right? no matter how business astute a Donald was, and intellectually savvy Obama was, mm-hmm. they wouldn't even be allowed into certain environments because Correct. people wouldn't take them seriously. That's the same thing that goes with your business. If you want people to take you a certain way, you want to make sure that you appear a certain way. And it doesn't mean you got to go get a thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar suit. 
It means that when you get a suit, even if it's off the rack, go get it tailored. Make sure that your hems are right. Make sure that your socks aren't sloppy. Make sure that your hair is always groomed. You keep your face groomed. This is just what it is. And if you have locks, keep them neat. Make sure they're, they're, they're out your face. Make, make sure that you're upright when you stand with good posture. Make sure you got good posture. If your belly is hanging over, suck that thing in. It's uncomfortable, right? So that means get in the gym. I put on my suit and my belly was, was little, this little lower end right here. I didn't like it. So I, I all day, <laughs> all day, went home out of breath because I held my breath all day. Head was hurting. But. Dizzy. <laughs> Dizzy. <laughs> but the image is important when it comes to setting a standard because it's the it's the it's the visual that people see first. What do you think about that, Iggy? I, think you, I know you're in the marketing world. No, no, you know, I, I, I got I, I 100% agree with you because this is you know something that my bullheaded, knuckleheaded self had to learn the hard way. You know, being a country fellow from Mississippi, being hard headed, you know, rock headed, and wanting to do things my way, I was like, you know, I can do what I I can dress how I want to, I can talk how I want to. I can say what I want to as long as what it is that I'm doing is valuable, right, to the people and I'm, I'm helping people. It doesn't matter. Man, I came to a quick realization that it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters what you think. In today's world, it, it would be what we consider branding. Right. Right. I remember when I was working. I like that. I like that. I like that. It's part of your it, brand. It's part of your brand. I like that. You, because the perception is reality per, for people. Ooh. How people perceive that is their reality. That's good. And a lot of people will never make it past the perception to understand what the real reality is if they disagree with how it is that you you look, what your presentation is. Now, when I was working, serving uh, tables, man, I used to work at this restaurant. Y'all probably you know what it is. I was serving soup, salads, and breadsticks, right? Pastas and stuff. And my manager, it was the first, it was the first uh, serving job that I had, right? And uh, I could do, I, when I first started, I, I could do the work. I could work hard. You know, I could make sure people had their food fast, make sure their order was right. But I didn't understand the presentation aspect of it. And my manager told me, he said, presentation is 80% of the money that you will make. So if you, if your shirt's not clean, right? If it's not ironed, if your apron's not clean, if you're not coming and you and you and speaking with with the proper vernacular uh, with people based on uh, you know a, a professional setting, right? If you don't if you don't smell uh, uh, up to par, that's going to affect how people perceive you, which is going to be the reality that they have of you. And in that particular instance, me serving tables, that was a, a direct effect on the amount of money that that's it is good. I made. So understanding that, listen, if, if you, you, when, when you got to play the game for as, as long as you need to, I'm not saying go against who you are as a person. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying fake it till you make it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to present yourself in a light that will allow people to accept you so that you can get your truth through, your message through, your, your, your company through, your business through, your product, your service through. Because ultimately, if you're in business, your goal is to service somebody, to solve a problem for people. So if you truly believe that your product or service is solving a problem, then you want to be able to get that to as many people as possible. That's and right. presenting yourself in the right light so that people have proper perception of you, now you can move that to most people. So I agree with you 100%. Mogul, unshare it and reshare uh, to the board, please. All right, so uh, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me put this on real quick. Uh, can you turn that fan on too? Oh. All right, so um, uh, I, I don't know what happened to the screen. You unshare it? Yeah, I'm sure it back. Okay, so, so, so let, me, let, 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 me, let me just say this. Um, let me just say this. I'm going to talk to the fellas. Um, and the reason why I'm going to talk to the fellas, and ladies, if you're watching, I'm not excluding you. But what I am saying is I do believe that in this day and age on social media, um, too, 
Too many women are trying to address guys, mm. and too many guys are trying to address women. Yes. I think that the best way of change is for men to address men, men. and women to address women based on the standards that are truly acceptable. Because this is what I will tell you. This little social experiment of freedom uh, is, is proven to us that it's not panning out good. Yeah, it's, it's not the benefit that we need. Um, um, because we're starting to look at each other in a mockery. So when it comes to business, men, I don't care what people tell you. You hear me? Your talent means nothing if your appearance can't match it. Whew. Um, you won't get the chances you desire until your appearance matches your value, especially the minority man, mm. that black and that brown man. No matter what your background or demographic is, that black and that brown man, you have to look the part. Even if you are a white man, mm. you got to look the part. Because if you do not, you will not be accepted at that level. Let me tell you, when you dress like a man. So what happened, Iggy? I asked myself, mm -hmm. I said, before 30 years old, we, we've done over $30 million in business. Okay. Before you hit uh, 30, uh, 30 of four, You've been a part of doing at least eight to ten million, Correct. right? And I begin to start asking myself, if I were to look at me, <laughs> I got tailored suits in my in my closet. Correct. I've invested four or five thousand dollars a suit. I got rich fresh. That's high quality. Why am I choosing to wear twelve dollar sweats? Not wash my shoes, <laughs> as if I made it. I didn't make it mm -hmm. because you can dress that way. You could have just passed right here. Uh, uh, um, you can dress that way when you don't need anyone else's opinion. Ooh. Let me say this. A lot of you believe that you don't need anyone's opinion when you still need customers to support your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look at the camera here. Social media got folks fooled, think it's the other way uh, around. Uh, social media has so many people fooled because people, if you wear a suit that's tailored and you're, and you're half as smart as Iggy, and Iggy comes in like a robe and dress shoes, and y'all are marketing to the same people, who do you think is going to get the first look first? Now, Iggy's results may speak for itself, but Iggy also will lose out on bigger money mm -hmm. because that bigger money in those institutions can't see themselves doing business with someone who doesn't take themselves seriously. And so Iggy had to ask myself, I said, dude, you're almost 32 years old. <laughs> you got two children. You're married. You run a multi-million dollar company. Uh, you're a leader of your team. Uh, you, you run a, a business development consulting firm that's, that's been in over 22 countries. You're launching your private equity firm. Do you take yourself seriously? So much that you don't care about how people uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How people uh, perceive you. Perceive you. And it went against what my father, my grandfather told my grandfather. He said, son, never leave the house. Not your best. It didn't hit me until this year, bro. Because he said, son, you never know who you may meet that is underdressed that don't need <laughs> what you need, that can fund what you desire. I said, damn. I went to the country club. 
Because you know we got a country club membership. Oh, yeah. Um, I seen it on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> and when I went to the country club, Iggy, uh-huh. do you know that these men that are well-established, retired, with capital, from different demographics, they always compliment me on how clean I look, how sharp I look, how nothing seems out of place. And in that moment, that's when I realized, damn, how much money did I uh, miss? Yeah. Because my ego was telling me that I didn't have to dress in the uniform of the industry that I wanted to be in, disrupt and impress. Mm. So I said, no, you got to dress like a grown man. So when I go to the country club, I'll be in my rich fresh. I'll be in my suit. I bring my bag. I keep it in my locker room, in the locker. And I undress, got it, and I put my giddy up back on, and they say, ooh, Dr. Jacobs, <laughs> you are so smooth, man. <laughs> hey, man, I want to introduce you to Bill when you come back. We miss introductions because they don't know how consistent we're going to be in our appearance. I don't want to be embarrassed. So, men, wash your hands. Wash your butt. Get powder. Yeah. For yeah. your gonads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get wipes after you boo-boo. Yeah, put it on the back of the toilet now. Go get manicu- uh, manicures mm-hmm. and pedicures. Lotion. Make sure that your pants and your clothes fit. Stop being so sloppy. When you come into the house and you've been wearing your shoes, it takes you two minutes to just wipe your shoes down to keep them looking nice without you going out and and, and with dusty looking shoes. Hang up your clothes when you finish wearing them. Put your important clothes in the cleaners. That is a part of your brand Mm. that you must invest into if you want to be taken seriously. They they, they 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 say all the time, you know, you you read in these these personal development books and these these self help books that you gotta work on yourself more than you work on your business. Mm. So you have to invest that time into you more than you invest it into your business. Right? Whether it's you know the 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 grooming, whether it's the cleanliness, whether it's you, you know, uh figuring out what type what the lingo is in certain industries so that that can become a part of your vernacular whether that's you you better, under- you better use them words you see me? look i've been on the on the pbs show man i've been having, right. you know thank you mogul thank you mogul you know expanding my vernacular oh <laughs> hey, ooh, say it again <laughs> say it again Dexter. <laughs> listen but that's that's a that's a part of of growing into yourself, growing into your business, growing into your brand. Because when you, when you when you think about brand, you think about you. Th- it's anything that you think about when you associate to a brand, right, Doctor Jake? When I say Nike, what's the first thing that come to mind? Just do it. Just do it, right? If I say if I say uh, uh, you can have it your way, McDonald's, right? So the the Man, I can't believe I knew that. See that? That's well, part of think about it. that's part of branding. You associate that with it. So if the first thing is somebody when I say thinks Bisco, about, what you think? <laughs> oh, smooth. <laughs> Assets bees. before splurging. <laughs> I think bees. Oh, you think bees? I think bees. Like biz. Biz. Business. Biz. Yeah, we we got to work on that, y'all. Business. <laughs> biz. <laughs> All right. So when it, when it comes to your 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 brand if you have a solution for people and you're looking to speak to to certain people or get uh engage with certain people and you can't even get their attention because they looking past you because their perception of you whatever they think about right when they remember you even if what you have is great when they remember you they think slouch they think they think stink they think dirty they think unorganized right because if, if somebody is unorganized in their appearance how are they going to be organized when they take care of my business oh, when that's my good. marketing this is what you have to understand when you're talking to business owners when you're talking to, to people who are going to spend their money all right when you're talking to consumers and people spend their money for your product or service if you selling some some hair stuff right 
and they looking on at your content online. They see you dirty. They be like, man, I don't know what she put in that hair stuff. I don't think I want that. I might buy that and, and get some of that dirt come to my. You just don't know <laughs> what people gonna I think or what That's people right. gonna say. So you have to be mindful of who it is that you're speaking to, what that is, what that 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 market, that industry, how it is that they look, how it is they present themselves, because. Like he said, even even if I was sitting up here in, some, in a football helmet and some shoulder pads trying to talk about marketing and business, it probably wouldn't go over well. It, it would not be the appropriate outfit for this, regardless if what was coming out of my mouth was the exact same information. You probably wouldn't be here listening because you couldn't get past the abnormal look and, and, and the, the, the misfit uh, costume or attire that I had on, and my brand would not be speaking uh, the same language. You, you, you would misunderstand it, and you would continue to move on and find somebody else that could provide you with a solution, and their brands look like something that resonates with you. And let, let me just say this. I know we spend a lot of time on brand, but um, I think as a grown man, you should dress. You should you should dress as a grown man. I think as a grown woman, you should dress as a grown woman. There should be a differentiation between your stance of who you are. But I also want to say this. When you are in the position uh, let, let, let's, I'll put it to you like that. Let, let's do a couple of things. First, Mark Zuckerberg is known for never wearing a suit, right? Correct. But why, when he go on CNN, he's wearing a what? Suit. CNBC. Suit. Courtroom. Going, going to talk to courtroom. Suit. Raising money. Suit. Wait a minute. This whole narrative of you don't need no. He wears his uniform in his environment. Mm. But when he wants to impress, he wears a what? Suit. Tailored, clean, well put together, groomed. As black and brown men, mm -hmm. I can't talk to the ladies. I want to talk to the men. As black and brown men, there are, there are, there are three things that you need to make sure you protect. Your name. Your image, well, a couple of four things. Your name, your image, your cleanliness. And lastly, you got to protect. Man, what I was going to say? I don't know, but I was, you had me on the edge of my seat. Wait. <laughs> I messed up that take. Ooh. Run it back, run it back. Okay. As a black man, black and brown man. There are four things that you need. As a black and brown man, there are four things that you need to protect. Your name, which is your credibility. Which means don't do something you say you can do that you can't do. And always come through when you say that you're going to come through. Two, your image. How you look and how you present. Three, your cleanliness. How you smell. The consistency of that smell. So if you smoke marijuana, if you drink I should not be able to smell that on you when you walk into any room. And the fourth thing, your language. Um, when I was in college, I used to be known for Iggy, um, never cursing. And my vocabulary used to be extensive. And I used to tell people, if you curse a lot, that means that you have a limit in your vocabulary which lets me know your intelligence. And I used to break people down just with words. Then I got around a bunch of social media people. I'm like, dang, okay, this is how they talk. And I started to fit in to the language of cursing and using like lackluster language. And what I began to realize was my vocabulary is what differentiated me from my peers. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I was the only one in the education department that got offered a full teaching salary 
a full teaching salary, Iggy. I, I came straight from, uh, they called me from basketball practice. The superintendent of Lancaster was there. Mm-hmm. Called me from basketball practice. They wanted me to come in my uh, practice. My pra- I said, I'm not coming in my practice gear. So I ran to my dorm. I spruced up. You know, I did a little wipe down. Then I got to the thing. I'm booking. I, I get to the X. bathroom. He sprayed the X. Yeah, no, I didn't have the X, but I had the, uh, what's the other one? Bod. Bod. <laughs> the cheaper version. So I came in there, you know, I'm like this, you know, whatever. And then when I spoke, you know why he gave me the job? He said, because I've never met a young man with a vocabulary like you have that uses it in the proper context. And he also is the same superintendent that not only gave me a teaching job, Iggy, mm-hmm. but he also funded my nonprofit in the same city and district that I taught. Never before done. Because I took the extra time. He knew I was coming from practice. So when he saw me come up in the best outfit I could in college, he saw the extra effort that I went out with. He saw my vocabulary. And then when I got online, I start dumbing down my vocabulary, going with the, you got to speak to people in their language, versus no, let me bring people up and give them context. That's why we start the show with new vocabulary words in a definition to raise it up because I'm tired of people associating black and brown businessmen and women with lower vocabulary, I got to talk to them in street terms, Grant Cardone. Mm. Because we don't want to take the time to learn vocabulary that's in the English dictionary, that's in our English language, that will actually make our conversations more concise. Mm -hmm. We use a bunch of words where three, four, five words will actually say that same same sentence. And so I just think it, it is on us to raise the standard so that people can actually take us more seriously as we're doing this thing. What's going on? What's next? We got next, Mogul. So next we are going to talk about the Yay Adidas New Deal. Um, so basically everybody knows Kanye and Adidas and Kanye almost everybody um, parted ways last year uh, over some <laughs> <laughs> over some, some things uh, that Kanye was saying. But um, in that, the Yeezy brand was bringing in $2 billion for Adidas, which is about 10% of their uh, entire revenue. Um, when they broke up, they s- the split cost them about $1.3 billion. Um, and in that, uh, they had a bunch of unsold merch that they couldn't sell without having to give Kanye his money um, due to the contracts. Uh, so they just had, were sitting on it. So right now with this new deal that they're having, it um, allows them to sell about $500 million worth of um the unused Kanye or Yeezy sneakers. Go to. So uh first and foremost, shout out to Yay, man. Shout out to Yay. Shout oh, hold on, out you, to Yay. I got you, man. Yay. Talk about knowing your worth. Shout out to Yay. Listen, and just to be clear, I can be pro Yay and not agree with everything Yay say. say. Oh, I knew you better. I, 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 knew you about I to can say be that. pro Ye and, and not, not agree, agree with, with everything, everything he say. <laughs> Just to be clear, right? Just to be clear. But absolutely, absolutely pro Ye. And I, 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 it was just interesting to kind of watch it unfold because if we if we go back to you know the 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 tweet and the language In and the, the energy that started the whole conversation that got the whole deal like broken up, torn up, removed, him kicked out and him losing. And then we and we look at the understanding that he literally got out of all these deals that he did not like without being sued. They forced him out and then he was able to reposition himself to get a better deal because the company realized that they couldn't move it. I, I start seeing the 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 Yeezy shoes and different stuff inside of uh, Ross and Walmart, these different stores, and now the understanding is that not only they they were trying to save money and cut money by cutting him out of the out of the deal and, and thought they were going to be able to go direct to market without Ye and be able to still earn the revenue from selling the products when the only reason people were buying the product was because of Ye. Because let's be honest, some of that stuff don't look good at all. I can't even cap to you. 
I, I think he's a great designer, but I don't, I don't like all the stuff. But because he is yay, because of the influence that, that he has, because of the goodwill he had in the marketplace and his ability to garner attention and conversation, that is the reason why his products were selling. Now they kicked him out the way and things weren't going how they thought that, that they were going to go. And understand they're going to lose. Uh, how, how much money was it that they that they uh, say they were expected to lose without Ye? One point three billion, two, almost. Well, uh, it was almost two billion. Yeah, almost two billion because he uh, the brand was worth two billion a year. Correct. Right. So the fact that when they when they realized that they were going to lose more money without him, of course they went back to the table. They got a whole bunch of inventory they got to get rid of. Yeah. Of course, they went, went, went back to the table with Ye, but again, now he's in the position and to negotiate better deals on his terms because he knew his worth, he held to that standard, and he was putting in the work behind the, ske- the scenes to develop the skill sets, the relationships, so that he can go into this place. Because one thing he says is educate yourself. I watched the video. I can't remember if you sent it to me. Or I did, uh, I did. When he was talking about, you know, if if the opportunity is going to come, and what you need to be prepared, prepared, and educated, and educated with the information, so that when that opportunity comes, you can execute on it. If the opportunity doesn't come when you think, you need to spend more time educating yourself, so when it does come, you are prepared. Shouts out to Yay, man. What you think, Doctor? Um, let 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 me let me say this. Um. It's a double-sided lesson. The first lesson is, of course, the side that worked out. Knowing your value, leveraging your value, is three lessons. And doubling down on your stance enough Mm -hmm. that you're willing to lose temporary money for a long-term point. That's important. Ye understood his value. Because of exactly what Iggy said, second point, he had, um, he had, uh, uh, what you say, he had good will in the marketplace. He had good will in the marketplace. Uh, go back to two. Explain what good will in the marketplace, and then I'm going to double down on what you said. So when we talk about good will in the marketplace, that's going above and beyond to do good for the people, even if that does it, even that means that you won't necessarily make the money that you that you thought up front, even if you have to make certain sacrifices or something. But you're doing, you're going above and beyond to do good for the market or for the people, and that in turn puts you in a position to to become a benefactor of the law of reciprocity. So the law of reciprocity basically states what I do to out what I, what I give out, I receive That's back. Right. That's right? right. So if when he was doing good in the marketplace, speaking truth in the marketplace, when he did the all of the the uh, the, the tours and the, and the Sunday services, right, and bringing all these people together and bringing good energy and sharing those positive vibes with, with people, now we we're seeing the law of reciprocity take effect. Even though he went through what many thought could have been the worst thing that anybody could have went through, it was not your business is taken, right. your family taken, right. your name tarnished, right. right? People saying that you are anti this a whole whole group of people literally against you and you are able to hold yourself steadfast and now that reciprocity is coming into place because you have to go back and sit at the exact same table with the people who condemned you but now you got the leverage so go ahead doctor so so here's the deal um and that's exactly what I, what, what what I was going with um goodwill in the market is standing for something and not backing down just because money's there correct Goodwill in the market is standing for something and not being willing to demean your value mm. just because someone is falsifying information about you and you could go there. But your image and what you represent and what you mean to the community means more mm. than you getting in some tit for tat battle on social media, demeaning the bad. I love scripture, man. Mm. Mm. Scripture says that from afar, you cannot tell who's the fool arguing. Yep. So if a wise man and a fool are arguing from afar, 
You cannot tell the difference between the wise man and the fool. That's that's true. No matter who is right or wrong. So that's why when you see these bouts online, Iggy, mm -hmm. and these people trying to prove themselves back and forth from afar, none of us have all the information, Mogul. None of us know what really went on behind the scenes, Iggy. Mm -hmm. So to go online to have these bouts amongst each other to prove who's the better benefactor doesn't do anything but diminish both sides. So when you talk about that, moving in methodical ways, understanding your value place and that goodwill in the market, and never dropping your moral code for the benefit of mm -hmm. somebody who's playing short term. And that's the thing about Ye that I love. Mm -hmm. No matter what people say about him, Iggy, he's going to stand on what he believes, even if it means... He lose friends, sponsorships, investors, because at the end of the day, he knows the value that he brings is so pure and intentional that he knows that you're going to have to double back. And that's what I love about Yay. The last point that I wanted to make was on the contrary. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we try to pull a yay move <laughs> before you really had true value to pull a yay move. And, and gave no goodwill. You at your job. I deserve a raise. I deserve this. I deserve a promotion. But you wasn't doing managerial duties. <laughs> See, you don't become a manager when they promote you. <clears throat> You become a manager when you accept the role before the promotion. You don't become a millionaire when you make a million dollars. You become a millionaire when you accept the role of a millionaire when you broke. Mm. When you accept the discipline mm. when you're broke. When you expect the responsibility when you're broke, when you, ex when you accept taking the fault and the blame, mm -hmm. when you're broke, mm -hmm. you become a millionaire before you make a million dollars. The million dollars doesn't make you a millionaire. Your discipline, your fortitude, your concentration, your commitment is what makes you a millionaire. You don't become a husband when you get married. Mm. You become a husband before you say, I do. You don't become a wife when you open the veil. You become a wife mm. in your everyday walk when you're single. Talk to me, Jake. What are, you, what are you saying? I'm saying that there are a lot of people that you think that you're more valuable than you are. Because if you actually met that value, <laughs> you would have what you think that you are mm. already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what I appreciate about Ye, he didn't pull that move before he sold a billion dollars worth of goods. Ye was, his brand was doing two billion before he made the move. I'm sure Ye saw his contract in his deal while he was in the deal. Mm -hmm. But he just wanted to prove who he was. Right. So when he pulled back, he knew what they would lose mm -hmm. when he walked away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people try to walk away before people can see that value. See, here's the deal. I am, and you are, who you say you are, who I say I am. Correct. There has never been a time, well, probably now, because I need y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to now <laughs> uh, Let me give y'all some history Iggy's my best friend and my brother Jig is my best friend and my brother um, Mogul is my best friend and little brother 
At Elijah's my best friend and mean brother. <laughs> At Elijah's so got that go mean. Chad is my best friend and my brother. All of my friends have been around me that I built businesses with nearly a decade. The only people that are new are Amir and Elijah. Mm -hmm. But everyone else that I built and, and built businesses with, y'all have experienced. Mm -hmm. They thought that they were more valuable than they were. Mm -hmm. And when they leave, they end up in a worse position after me. And I end up in a edified position after them because I was who I positioned myself to be. They were not. Mm -hmm. Jake, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, before you try to blow your smoke, make sure that you can actually create a fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely, I definitely want to veg you back off that a little bit and, and, and speak to Ye is because he, he's willing to stand on what he believes and Make sure y'all like and share this. If y'all liking this live show right now, make sure you like, share, and comment. Because, listen, y'all ain't going to see no show this pure on the internet. Well, I ain't going to say that. There's a lot of ego there. I'm Ooh. sure that you will. But what I will say is I believe that we can compete with the largest shows on any platform. Just wait on it. Sorry for interrupting. And Dr. Jake got a good suit on. <laughs> got a good, good suit. Yeah. <laughs> But when it, come, when it comes to Ye, not only is he willing to stand on what it is he believe, believes and stand his ground, like you say, right, you can change your mind when the facts change. So he is willing to stand his ground and then admit he's wrong and that he's standing on new ground and, and hold that ground down too. If, he, if it comes to a point where, where he, he, he's in his truth in the moment and he's, he's standing on that and facts come down the line later, he will openly go and stand on that same rock that's and right. shout that that's I right. was wrong. This is where I am now. And that's why, well, that's a great point, Iggy. Yes, and move. Dude, because he has such a pulse on him mm -hmm. that he's not, see, ego is, and arrogance is, when you think that you're more and better than everyone in the world when you have not met everyone in the world. Mm. Confidence is, is when you believe in yourself because of what you know you can do. And he's confident in him because he's know what he's done. Yes. But he's not arrogant in himself where he believes that he's better than people that he's not proven himself to be. And the only way you can do that, Iggy, is if you are fully transparent yeah. With both your failures, mm -hmm. just as much as you're openly vulnerable and vocal about your wins. That's mm -hmm. a great point. Mm -hmm. Please keep going on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gonna he gonna he gonna stand on on that same rock, and that goes to what you what you speak about uh, as a, from from being a man, understanding that you you have you have to move with that confidence of knowing, yep. and in order to know, you have to put in the work to work on yourself to be in a space of knowing. But at, at any point, if that changes, you have to be okay with pivoting, admitting that, that this is where I, 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 I was, and this is where I am now, and being able to move forward. Because I, 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 can, I can follow somebody, right? I can respect somebody who I can understand that, that they can acknowledge their wrongs. Being confident in what it is you know now doesn't mean that you believe that your way is the only way. It's being confident and knowing that that is the best way based on your level of knowledge, experience, expertise, but being able to move forward and stand on the same rock shout from the same mountaintop that this is what it was, this is what it is now, and this is where it is I stand. So definitely, listen. Like Dr. J said, man, this this, this show right here, y'all y'all got to share it with somebody y'all care about, right? Go ahead, click the share button, send this to somebody that that you believe this conversation is valuable for. Send this to a friend, post on your social media, whatever it is you need to do so that you can move this conversation forward. Because again, we confident enough to compete with the best of them, baby. I'm confident, but I'm not arrogant enough to mm -hmm. think that my show is the best. Correct. I'm confident to know. That we can't compete. Correct. But I'm not arrogant to think that I am the best. And this is where a lot of us miss out on business. Well, well, that, don't mean, that don't mean if we do compete that we won't come out the best. That no, just no, don't no. believe that we're going to say we're the best Correct. until we compete. Correct. There you go. Correct. 
I'm not going to say that I'm the best until I until I beat all of the best. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of us do. Um, we think that we're owed the respect of peers that are performing at the highest level in these specific industries that we're in when we haven't even proven to our own city and state that we are the best. Mm. See, Scripture says, oh, can I, can I go to Scripture? <laughs> please, doctor, please. Scripture says, start in Judea, then go to Samaria, then go to the outermost parts of the world. Hmm. <laughs> So what is scripture trying to tell us? Chad, check your phone. What is scripture trying to tell us? Scripture is trying to tell us you master your uh, arena, your, your, your environment, your, 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 your community, uh, uh, where, where your city, your state first. Mm-hmm. Where, you are, where you have proximity. Then, then go to, then go to the country. Then after you master the country, then go to the world. Mm. And a lot of us are working backwards. We go everywhere else expecting for everyone else to give us respect when you don't even have respect in your own company from your own team. Mm. You don't even have respect from your own peers in your own industry Where you are. Okay, here's the thing. Respect doesn't mean that they have to like you now. Respect means that they can't, that that they know that they just can't outdo you. And I don't want to be liked. I want to be be respected. respected. Indeed. You don't have to like Dr. J. You don't have to like my company. But what you got to respect is that I built my company with my best friends. What you got to respect is that I'm not the guy that got new friends every year or two or three years. What you got to respect is that the youngest executive of our companies, as far as how long they've been with us, is three years. What you got to respect is that we built our companies debt free. Mm. What you got to respect is that we built our companies without outside investors. Yes, sir, doctor. What you got to respect is that even when we lost millions of dollars, we still were able to stabilize ourselves because we practice what we preach. What you got to respect is how we present ourselves in the marketplace. What you got to respect is how much we go above and beyond for our clients and our customers. What you got to respect is how we move and how we're not considered fools in the marketplace. What you got to respect <laughs> is the fact that we're masters and practitioners of our craft. What you got to respect is that all of us are, are masters and we're, we're, we're in our field in departments and we don't overstep each other was, because woo. we respect what, we, what each other brings. What you got to respect <laughs> is the fact that we built this company on biblical standards. So no matter what people say, you can wipe your, you can wipe a white glove and say, mm, y'all may have fallen short, but your integrity and your intentions Clint. are still clean. Clint. That's what you got to respect. Uh, Mogul, I know. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Uh, that this was not a part of your show notes as a producer. What you got to respect. A big mogul. <laughs> Is that during the recession, we hired 52 full-time black and brown folk during one of the scariest times in American history. And we had one of the highest paying salaries as far as group of salaries in the country when everyone else was cutting pay. We were overpaying. That's what you got to respect. Mm. You ain't got to like me, but you got to respect me. And as my dear brother Jesus said, he said, I come here not to be liked. I come here to put mothers against fathers. Mm. Fathers against sisters. Mm. 
brothers against. We need an organ mogul sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> because what I come to bring is going to shake up the world. Yeah. Yeah. I don't come for kumbaya. Yes, sir, doctor. I come for change. Yes, sir, doctor. And one of the biggest things I want people to get from us in our company, in our group of companies, is that we're not coming for y'all to be, oh, they're the greatest. We're coming to say they impact us the most. Ooh. What's the next topic, Mogul? Ooh. For, oh, wait, 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 let me wait. say this. All praises to Most High. <laughs> because hey. without God... Hey, Nothing is possible. One, one thing I just I just want to let y'all let y'all know, not saying that it, that it will. Don't believe it will, but just in case, yeah, we lose a stream or uh, uh, you know we dealing with anything. The weather's kind of getting ugly outside. Yeah, we we doing a show in the middle of a yeah, tornado, in the middle of a whole but thing. But you gotta respect. respect. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm fixing to say. You got to respect and understand that you need to go ahead and share this with somebody. Go ahead and like that. Uh, and if you want to get Deeper access to us, learn from us, the skill sets that we talk about. Here, Dr. Jake talking about a millionaire. You hear him talking about the suit city guy. Understanding the work that we put in in the in the business and the models and the strategy and the skill set that we use in order to generate the awareness and the, the the work that we're doing to actually impact what it is we're talking about. You can go to PBSDollarClub.com. You can go ahead and sign up for eleven dollars a bro, year. Bro, listen. This is what people are failing to realize. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. No, listen. No, think about this. Uh huh. Jig, come here. Jig. Chad, come here. Can you come stay here? Hey, buddy. Chad, come in here. Hi, guys. Hi, Sean. Hi, guys. All right, so, um,. Come, 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 come stand. All right, stand right here. Go, yeah. go. Uh, yep, yes. and, and stand, stand in my camera. They already seen Iggy. This is what you got to understand. This guy, y'all never see him. And I get on his ass more than anybody you can imagine. He probably think I hate him Beep. sometimes. I get on his butt. Beep. I'm sorry. You're right. I get on his butt. I am working on my cursing. I promise y'all. I get on his butt more than you can imagine. But this guy right here. When I had no money, when he came out of college, I got him a job, right? And I had no money, but I had a dream of building a business. I called him and I said, don't ask me no questions. Send me $480. <laughs> he said, bro, I get paid Friday. Yeah. He said, bro, could you, you on the thing? Elbows strong. Boy, big shoulders. Strong. Big shoulders. Country shoulders. Uh, he, 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 said, he said, this was in 2014. He said, okay, give me the Friday. This was Tuesday. I'll send you 480. I said, I'll pay you back. Don't know when. <laughs> but if you love me, you trust me. Just know I'm working on something. That may take some time for me to develop. But I'm going to make sure that our family is good. Did I not? Even though business go through trials and tribulations, I don't have, I didn't replace my friend. I didn't come up and be like what these internet people tell you. Uh, uh, when you make it, sometimes your friends know. Sometimes your friends are in their own development stages. They're willing to support you. You just got to give them time to develop too. So he's been since 2012, 2014, he invested. When I left my job, I said, bro, I need your money. <laughs> <laughs> and there has not been not one company. And I always test them. Even now, I'll be like, bro, send me $100 now. I don't ask me why. Just send it. He be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he sends it. This guy, we were, we were selling products in empty rooms. Am I lying? Y'all, we got pictures. Proof. A lot of these people on the internet, they the only ones that can verify their own story. 
<laughs> they beefing with all their old friends and all their old friends telling different stories. Y'all will see pictures him have sleep on the wall. <laughs> Literal pictures. I probably got one in my phone. Literal pictures of this guy on the phone. I mean, on the wall, half sleep. But in the front, <laughs> while we selling products in apartment complexes. Am I lying? Boy, they think I am lying. Yeah, y'all know Dr. Jake got proof. Uh, hold on. I got proof. All right. Ooh, no. Uh, no. Oh, I got to show this. See, see, see. People show y'all receipts. That ain't receipts. Go to four. Go, go, to, go to four. Oh, there we go. Go to four. Trust four. Trust four and believe. Okay. That is October. I got a screenshot like this here. That is October. Hold on. Y'all see the screenshot? It's going it's gonna to update. It's going to update. Uh, go to one and go back to four. All right, let me see something real quick. Let me save, save it. And then. Save it. <laughs> Y'all be nosy. <laughs> nosy, rosy. Yeah. Right, look, look, look. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. Oh, it didn't do the date. It didn't do the date. All right, hold on. Let me see something. It didn't do the date. Let me see. All right, hold on, Tony. I got I got to show y'all because y'all y'all got y'all gonna get some understanding today. Y'all gonna get some understanding today. Hold on. While he's showing y'all. Uh, All right. Uh, hold on. Mogul. Go to one. Mogul. Go one. I need you to come work the camera real quick. Okay. Cause this this show this show this show finna be a show uh, of transparency. I don't know why you click to you. Here you go. Come on, show this. Make it clear. <laughs> I say nothing left. <laughs> uh, all right, make it closer. Take it closer. Take it closer. Show that. Show that date. Now clear it up. Clear it up now. What that date say there? October 6, 2015. Now, now, now show him. So that's me and Jig. Hold on. Now make it clear on me now. Make it clear back. Cause we 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 got we got we got receipts, and that's one thing people ain't got. Receipts, hold on, hold on. Okay, go back. Now y'all remember I told y'all he was half sleep on the wall, right? Make it clear. Y'all, Mogul got one eye. It's crazy how how clear he can get. Now now blow it up, Mowgli. It's clear now. No, no, you no. Don't bring it close. Like, Blow it up it. on the on the picture. Yeah. They they see the date. Yeah, spread it out. They saw the date. This is it's 2015. That's eight years ago. Y'all see that dude right there, crouched on the wall. I have no idea why he was even sitting there. <laughs> Keep it a buck with you. Now come on back. Give give my phone back. Now go and make me clear again. Y'all like one or two? Three or four? <laughs> so what am I saying? These guys have been with me for years. We've been through the developmental stages. We've been through that process. We've been through all of the things that you can that, that you could potentially even imagine. When we was broke, borrowing from each other broke. You know how broke you got to be to borrow from broke friends? <laughs> <laughs> that broke friends are like, all right, when you get paid. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to borrow from you, and if you're going to borrow from us, we're going to borrow together. Now go back to Iggy. They can at least see my hand. Go to two. You see my hand? That lets you know I'm here. So Iggy, Iggy used to be, because we used to do network marketing together. Iggy used to be our upline. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Iggy was in Mississippi, driving back and forth to Dallas, sleeping on air mattresses. Let me clean my head like a pastor. Uh, trying to figure out 
Who are these Dallas folk? <laughs> <laughs> Country bumpkins <laughs> like him <laughs> killing the game. Now, Jake, what are you trying to say? What I am trying to say is that you got to understand that when we speak, we're speaking in a space where you got people who have been building with each other for years, broke, busted, and disgusted. And I am the youngest. <laughs> oh, he be little brothering too. Oh, uh, listen, y'all, listen. He be pulling a little brother car. I, all I'll the pull time. a little brother car on these three <laughs> faster than you can imagine. They, they, now, they pull a big bro card on me. <laughs> they be like, nah, nah. <laughs> but let me tell you something. When you are building something special, if you don't have people that you're willing to die for and give everything for, and you're in it for yourself, that's where the lonely road is. When you don't have people that you can struggle with, that you can cry with, that know all your weaknesses, that know all your flaws, that know all your stuff, they know when you're lying, they know when you're stunting, they know all that. They know all of it. If you're not building with people like that, then you're not building at all. Jake, what are you trying to say? What I am saying is I want y'all to stop following people. That Y'all good. Appreciate it. Uh, y'all, I need y'all to stop following people that don't have long-term people in their life that can confirm everything that they're saying. People that... Every five, ten years, got a whole new set of friends. I need y'all to understand that when you stand on something, like yay, I can stand on something and go to war with these three brothers for five now and go to war against them to get us on the same page and then go to war with the public. You got to have people like that if you're willing to stand on something. But you cannot get friends and supporters that back you like I have. If you are a finicky person, if you're somebody that blows smoke but don't have fire, <laughs> you cannot be somebody that's like me. That's the youngest of our bunch. Well, Mowgli is younger than me now. But everybody else is older. But at, out of our core, that's the youngest of our bunch. That they're like, all right, Jake, we going with your vision. If you are somebody that blows smoke but never produces a fire. And that's what I love about Ye. Ye. Is that Ye is a person that is going to bring the fire. And he can't help that the smoke come because the wind carries smoke where fire was. Man, look, we was we was on the way back from, you know, like it just this got to do with yay. Um, but we was on the way back from getting lunch and we was in the car with Nick and she was talking about one of her friends. Nick! <laughs> How <laughs> 14 years! Oh, since 2014? Yeah. Our damn near whole staff. Yeah, she was talking about. Hey, yay. Mogul, we need you. Add Elijah and Shandlin to catch up in the year. Uh, Mogul, unshare it from the board and we share babies. it. Y'all babies. All right, go ahead. Um, but he does uh, take his, his spiritual advisor, how he takes care of him and the things that he does outside of and how he's been with him for a long time and the things that he goes above and beyond to do for his, the people who are in his circle and that he cares about. And I believe... Who? Yay. Oh, yeah. Yay. Like, we were literally just talking about bro, this. Yay, bro, yay supports. Yes. Bro, this is the thing that people. I'm so glad you said that, bro. You're so great. You're so amazing. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you too, bro. Bro, listen. Bro, that's the thing. You can't be willing to die for something if you don't have supporters that are willing to die for you. Mm. Mm. It's clear. That yay has a group of people 
that's been with him such a long time that rock with him. What's what's the what's what's the guy's name that that uh, recorded all the footage? There's, there's the documentary. I don't know his name, but, but him. But him. <laughs> he went all them years, bro, yep. and was right there supporting Kanye. Yep. And people were calling him a fool, fool, stupid, stupid, crazy. Kanye don't, Ye don't. He, and then come around the back end on Netflix, and not only were able to you know get the revenue, but now he's uh uh. Has a, a full film on Netflix and that he can go and shop and earn, and Correct. that's in his credibility because he supported Ye, and Ye is the, the man that he is, and was able to turn back around and do that. Yes, bro. sir. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Hey, hey, bro, Ye, Ye split with him 50 50. 50 50. 50 50, bro. 50 50. And I, I listen, I can't, never, I can't never trust no man or woman that do business that don't take care of their team. Don't take care of their team. Ain't got nobody around that can vouch for them past 60 days. <laughs> and don't take, let, let me tell you, oh, oh, facts. Or a year. Yo. We'll give three years. I'll get three we'll years. Give I, three. I was doing the most. Yeah. But yeah. So let, let, let's, let's say this, right? But let me tell you something. For those of you that want to be leaders of your crew and you want people long term, your crew. If you're the leader, your crew will be willing for you to get all of the good stuff first. If you're willing to take the bad first, too. Mm, Boy, mm. is that? Hey, <laughs> hey, is that? Hey, 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 is that? Hey, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Listen. B-E-T. B-E-T. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> my team encourages me to get the stuff first mm -hmm. because they know I'm willing to sell it first. Mm. See, we talking about integrity. We talking about standing on something. We talking about, see, true brothers, you're going you gonna to beef, you're going to be mad, you're going to be irritated with each other. But a true brother is not going to judge the intention of another brother because they know that they're willing to sacrifice for that brother at the same extent that somebody else will. So you can't want to be the leader of a crew if you're not willing to die by the sword faster than your crew. Period. What you got? Am I off? No, you're not off. Am I? Am I like? You well, know? you might be a little off because I can't say that you would die before me. For you, for me, we just gonna be laying together. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Mogul. We, what we got next? What we got next? Uh, we got a whole rest of the show that we <laughs> Mogul like, bro. I'm the producer. Nah, it, it's okay. I actually love the the Mogul like. I'm the dad. <laughs> Big mogul. All right, so we do have a little bit more to go. Um, and we were going to go to the business analysis of the day, um, but I, I want to go past that down to Smash or Pass, which is the companies that we use as um, entrepreneurs. Um, so we know what Smash or Pass. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate that. Um, Smitty Smash or Pass. Shandling, go home. Smitty yeah, Smash. We need you to go home so we be safe. What? Smitty Smash. But anyway, with Smash or Pass, what we do is we – Bring up a couple of topics and or um, skill sets and things of that nature, technologies that we are currently using or people currently use. Um, we say we will smash it, which, you know, if you're of any age, you probably know what that means. Um, or you pass it. If you're of any age, you kind of know what that means as well. So um, we're going to start off with Airbnb. So like for traveling as an entrepreneur, would you rather do an Airbnb or a, uh, a hotel? <sighs> So I can't just give it a solid uh, eh or eh. Uh. It really depends. I, would, uh, eh, said, uh, can't uh. I can't give it an eh or an eh. Uh. Uh, it depends on the situation. I'm I'm more apt to uh, do the Airbnb thing, especially you know group travel. But if it's like you know specifically like a, a, a conference and they got a host hotel, uh, and you know I'm showing up something like that, or it's it's. Um, there were no Airbnbs available or it just made more sense to be in a hotel, but I probably lean a little bit more towards uh, Airbnb uh, out there. So I guess I guess that's a smash. Uh, you're asking, what's the question? 
Um, so would you guys rather use an Airbnb or a hotel for your business travels? Uh, it, it just depends. Um, if I'm in an area that I feel like um, uh, potentially could know us, um, if I'm in an area, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. If I'm in an area where we can't take our guns or we couldn't travel with our guns or our own protection with our security, mm -hmm. if it's... I don't. I honestly don't feel like I need security when my brothers are with me. Because <laughs> you don't. <laughs> he said, "Because I don't." Listen. Because like, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> let me tell y'all something about Listen. my brothers. They go from, they go from partners. They go from business partners, uh, brothers, to lead security. <laughs> when I'm a, now, Jig, he don't care. <laughs> I, I I think that Jig want everybody to die together. Like Jig ain't Jig gonna be like, if I'm gonna die, you gonna die together. But <laughs> but Mogul, Iggy, and Chad, they always turn into watchdogs. Jig be like, well, shit, if Jake didn't move, I ain't moving. <laughs> <laughs> but Jig is the oldest too. Yes. <laughs> so I'm the baby, he the oldest, and we all are still I'm as I, we all protective of Jig as much as everybody protective of me. It's just listen if yeah. listen listen if anybody got a problem with Jig, they got a problem with me because I know That's Jig didn't do it, and Jig if he did, do it. it don't matter. You deserved it. That's right. But with me, if they got a problem with me, they know I did it. So they protecting that. Yeah, too. we got to protect it's it. So I, I, the thing is, it's more preventative maintenance with him, so he don't get to the problem. <laughs> yeah, because they know I'm ignorant. I am ignorant. But the point that I'm making is, it just depends. Uh huh. If I'm traveling alone, I'm gonna be in a hotel. Mm -hmm. If I'm traveling with just one of my brothers, I'm gonna be in a hotel. If I'm traveling with at least two of y'all, three of us, we Airbnb. -in. If I got security, we absolutely Airbnb -in because it's cost efficient. So it just kind of, it, it really just kind of depends right. on the environment. So I'm going to smash, smash. Okay. And say it depends. Smish, smish. It's okay. a smish, smish. <laughs> All right. So for technology, uh, Apple products. Smash. Shimmy smash. Check, check me out. <laughs> check me out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm rocking. I'm rocking. And 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 the reason it, it is, it's not just because you know they're an amazing brand. It's because of the the ability that the the different pieces of technology have to connect and work with each other. I can be working on my on my phone, copy something from my phone, paste it to my my MacBook, airdrop it uh, a big file back that I downloaded on my computer. Right, communicating uh, the the focus uh, be be set the same as for if it's do not disturb. Or I can uh, FaceTime and and keep the same text messages going. I just love the the, the con connectivity of Apple products and how they work together. So I'm a smash on the Apple. Uh, as far as me, <clears throat> I'm absolutely smashing on Apple. It crushes everything. See, here's the deal that people, here's the deal that people fail to realize. They be talking about Androids can do all this and that. You I ain't can get it. with this and you can get with that. You can get with this and you can get with that. You can get with this and you can get with that. You can get with this. Now this is where it's at. Yeah. So, um, here's the deal. Apple makes complex things simple. And that's what business is. Mm -hmm. Making complex things simple. And there's a lot of people that will end up working for us, Iggy. Mm -hmm. That will be like, I got we're gonna hire people with MBAs and doctors and all this other stuff. And they're gonna be like, our owners are stupid as hell. But it's not about being complex and being all this other stuff. It's about how can you make life simple? How can you make the consumer's life simple? And Apple has share. Everything communicates. Everything's a cloud. It's the same Apple phone. I can't say the same thing for Galaxy. They create 90 different galaxies a year. They all tether differently. <laughs> they all do, do different stuff. So it's not about the cost of something. It's about the simplicity of something. So I'm smashing on Apple. 
And if you got uh if you got um uh what what they call that? If you got uh Android on here, I'm passing on that for sure. Okay. So with that, let's talk about HP. Like so who? Uh, HP. Who? <laughs> okay, we can we can pass that. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> we 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 can pass that. So okay. uh, that's that's an automatic, and you better not bring it back up if you want to build a business on HP. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear none of that yeah. crap. <laughs> all right. So we have Google Suite. So like all the Google things that you use for like uh, Sheets, uh, Drive, all of those things. You you said Google Sheets, Suites. Oh uh, yeah, oh, I'm, I love I'm rocking with Google for the exact same thing as I was saying about Apple. Simple, the simple, and the ability to connect with all the different apps they have and work seamlessly together. A lot, a big yeah, thing. a lot of people make business a lot. A lot of people make business complex. So they be fun. like, if my if my product can do nine thousand different things, then that means I have a much more better chance of making money. That's not true. If your product can do complex things, simple. Make it easy, layman's terms, easy to understand. That's what takes off because you got to understand that 80% of the world like things simple. Only 5% of the world like complex things. Yeah, and I don't, I don't And the 5% that of the percent. world are the ones that make the most money. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who create. Things for simple people to be able to use. Kind of like the pocketbookkeeper.com. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> It's a it's a bookkeeper in your pocket. It's a bookkeeper in your pocket. <laughs> in your pocket. Yeah. What uh, we got next, Mogul? The Halo app. Smash, 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 smash. I'm going to have to let you explain to them what the Halo app is. No, you got it. No, I'm going to let you explain. I want, I, want, I, want you, I want you to try. I know you want me to try. However, all right, so check this out. You want me to show them or what? That's what I thought she was going to do. You know, thought it was a little Oh, uh, you can explain. And yeah, all right. So, uh, wait, wait, wait. You listening? What you want me to? What you? What we waiting for? You said wait, 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 oh, wait. No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you got to explain it. Yeah. Okay. So cool. All right. So the Halo app is literally a peer-to-peer -peer lending app. Uh, that a, a technology that allows uh, you as an individual to uh, become a. Uh, Pay for access to the app. Get on it. If you have surplus cash, which is what we teach, the skill sets and leveraging private banking and uh, understanding marketing, everything we teach inside the PBS Dollar Club. Bro, why'd, you, why'd, you, why, why'd your voice change? Why you interrupting me? I was in a bro, flow. No, no, bro. What is that voice? I don't even know. <laughs> Mogul. Now you're making me feel, Did you? <laughs> feel insecure. <laughs> Ah, Listen, Michael. time out. If y'all like, if if, if y'all like my whatever my voice was, give me some ones in the no. chat. No, listen. What was it? If bro, if y'all heard this voice change, let me see threes in the chat. Where did it change? Let me see some threes in the chat. They trying to learn about Halo app. Tra yeah, Tracy said, yeah, y'all need to protect. <laughs> Check it out. Hey, press some threes in the chat if y'all heard this voice change, bro. What was that, dog? What changed? Where did it change? You said, okay, so we're talking about... <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I cannot wait till you watch this show. Ain't no threes, baby. <laughs> Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a... a Out of all line. the people that we have live, yeah, they, they sound all, like... I, 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 listen, they all next, time, next time you ask a question on office hours... <laughs> don't. You ain't gonna answer. <laughs> I ain't answer what you... <laughs> No, I'm just playing. I got you. I got you. But hey, y'all see my missing tooth? Go back to me, bro. Yeah, listen. <laughs> black people always got this missing tooth. No, they don't. Let me see yours. Let me see yours. I don't have a you missing. Got that? No. That's because you have Venezuelan. Uh, 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 Amir uh, got it. Uh, no, he don't. Yes, I do. So Most Amir my teeth are gone. Nope. Okay. Uh, Chad don't <laughs> got it, and Sean don't got it. Chad got it. I ain't never seen it. Chad got. Tracy said three, 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 three. three. I did it earlier on purpose now, Tracy. I think you, like, <laughs> conflating that now a little bit. Right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He what was, is the Halo app? went straight to game show. <laughs> <laughs> Fact, you were like, okay. So coming on down, we have Halo app. <laughs> so for those of y'all who don't know, I did used to be an MC back in the day. I did host well, number of events. I had 9,000 lives. Listen. You was a dancer. I was. So you say you I can pull I can pull I can pull up the, the video from, from B T one oh six apart. B E T. Big. Oh no, pull it up. Uh uh, uh tell me where to go. 
<laughs> no, no, we got to wait. Amir. No, I got to find it. No, bro, we got, got, bro, we got, got time. I no, got to find it. I got to find it so I tell you what to say. You just said you can pull it up. I can. It's on YouTube. All right, let me go. I'm going to look it up. So You you can't look it up. I can't call I can't say Iggy? No. What was your dance group called? Mm, that's what you want to know. Anyway, back to Halo. No, bro, look at Okay, it up. I, I got you. No, they want to see it. <sighs> no, they want to see it, bro. No, 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 no. We want to see. So you say you want to thug. Wait, how you supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, so I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> he was working on something. Oh, you getting old. It's not as easily uh, findable now, is it? It's never been easily findable. By the way, we was on Wild Out Wednesday, and we was... Uh, Bro, what's that voice? We was on Wild Out Wednesday. I did that on purpose. That's the oh, DJ my. voice. Hey, listen, so I want to say, uh, this is DJ Iggy. Uh, Let me see. I'm looking, what's I'm that? looking, I'm looking. Tell me what to look for. I no, look for. No, no, because I don't know what to look for. All right, so y'all, we're going to have it Uh, We're going to have it I'll Tuesday. show it next. Yeah, I'll show it on Tuesday. Y'all, Iggy really used to be dancing, going on tour and stuff. Yeah. Dance with some of the big boys, man. Oh, my goodness. Here you go. I done danced Here you practice go. in uh, Here you go. Usher Studio in Atlanta. Done been Usher on. got a studio? Yeah. What's it called? Raymond? Usher Studio. It's called Usher it, Studio? It's, it, it's called Usher's Studio. It's Usher. It it's Usher Studio? I'm about to look it up. Is it uh, yeah, this is where his this is this is where he practices dances where he they have live musicians in there where they where they uh make it's called Studio Usher. No, okay. that ain't it. Oh, it's just called Usher. AKA 11th Street Studios. He renamed it because Usher Studio was stupid. <laughs> Usher, if you listen to me he right not, now. He not, he not. I'm gonna make sure he don't. That's my big that's my big brother. Is it? Because if he he needs to be invested. <laughs> we, we we almost done with the fun. Okay, but let me tell you something. <laughs> Usher, I got to tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Naming it Usher Studio was stupid. No, it so wasn't. I'm glad that you named it 11, 11 Street Studios because you got to understand in the time period in which that was Usher was the brand name. So Usher Studio it was like I get to oh, go oh, and be inside oh, Usher Studio. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now who? No, 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 wow. no, no, no. Hey, no, hey, hey, y'all. He talking mess, but uh, Iggy was in the background doing this. Now feel it in your body, the body. I was in the front ground, you not the background. Acting with your boo. You're gonna act like you read it, but you don't really know this. Him hotter, y'all. Have to change your past, but won't let it go. I've been there, done it. Uh, looks like around. I can't find it. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. Looks like I can't find it. Hey, did you like did you like my dancing? Yeah, it was great. No, Thanks, it, Mogul. It was trash. You liked it? No. <laughs> the people like it, bro. Nobody liked it. But but did you see what I did? Give me a no, one no, in the no, trash. No, show you. Go back to go back to one. You see how I separated from the mic? I said I've been there, done it. And I brought myself back. After all that, this is what I found. Ooh, we know. We, boy. You was in your room practicing as a teenager. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, moving around. I was effing it up, boy. What, Mario and then Usher. Whoa, Mario. Listen. No, I was too. That's why I'm asking. Usher. <laughs> uh, Alicia Key. Her album. Boy, Alicia, boy, I, boy, I was dancing. Boy, you could have caught, boy. I don't know who the top choreographer is. But I was him. Caught up. Got me feeling that. Caught up. I'm losing control. I still know that album I made. <laughs> but you got it? No, but this is this is some of the first videos I've made getting online, bro. I ain't see. Oh, no. All right, so you got to go to this real quick. Oh, no. Hold on. Go. Oh, what about for the show? Hold on. No, no, no. We're going to four. No, where, no, where my port? <laughs> There's a sign. There's a sign. Chad, I a need sign you. I'm supposed to be talking about Halo. Apps. I need the oh, Chad. I need the bro. Every hour. These are some dancing videos though. Chad. I show this. One. I show this dancing video. What? This is this all right. Is, so all right. This is actually really dope. No, where's the port? I had the other port in here. Is it on the floor? On the floor? 
on the floor. On the floor? How you know it was on the floor and didn't pick it up? I'm pretty sure you dropped it. Wow. Now he was I'm using context clues. That's crazy. All right. Hold on, y'all. Here you go. All right, so this Y'all is, know this is a live show, right? It's a so, live show. Wait a minute. Don't go to four yet. You get what you get. All right, so let me do a little intro. <clears throat> Ahem. So this is a... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> this is a video of a live performance I did at an HBCU, the Jackson State University, uh, where it was back right around... You're talking about the, you're talking about the same uh, college that was robbing uh, Dion? That's, that's, uh, uh, that is <laughs> Cap. That is Cap. I, this, this is, I need you to say allegedly, sir. Allegedly. And due to the fact that that's my home city and I got inside people that was capped, his own people moved his stuff and he didn't come back and clear that up openly. They moved it out of his office. What you mean? When they was uh, talking about he was stolen, when he came on a press conference and said that it was stolen, his jury and stuff out of the locker room, he was pissed. He never rectified it that his own people moved his stuff. I'm talking about the money. What money? The money he said that he was supposed to make. So you're going to believe without proof? Allegations? That's what the people do. So you just said how you was changing because you were in suits and cleaning up your vernacular. Now you're talking about the people. I man. can't change overnight. No, but you can try and, and acknowledge. Okay. okay, let me acknowledge. All right, so anyway. What this proof is, you got? <laughs> what proof do I have? Yeah. Uh, the proof is, is on the, 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 the proof lies on the accuser, sir. Ooh. Because I, I accused, yeah. I got to prove. Yeah, you. And the, the, the defendant doesn't have the burden to prove. Well, Jackson uh, State, I ain't got enough money to go to suit with you. So. Yeah, so please. Uh, allegedly. All the allegations <laughs> are y'all to deal with and figure out. Allegedly. So this is a video uh, performance I did, Jack State University, where I basically, it was uh, during the t right after the whole Chris Brown and Rihanna situation. Oh, we talking about ago. when Chris beat up uh, uh, Rihanna Allegedly. <laughs> Now, now. So this is, I, I took that music and I put together a storyline where I performed it. And this is what it is that I'm going to show. Cause if we, oh, you about to show the people? I'm about to show the people because I couldn't, I couldn't find. Y'all, did y'all know I used to be a collegiate coach? Let's go to four. <laughs> <laughs> I got proof of that too. I believe you do. So I'm a, it's four to. But wait, wait, go rewind it. What oh, was your name? Really nice. Okay, really nice. And uh, the girl Let played Rihanna. You she from South Dallas. You. Oh, you was Chris she, Brown. Yes, and she was Rihanna. I'm in the orange. Get it, Iggy. Hey, that's when your knee was good, wasn't it? Nope. Oh, she Iggy. Gotta be a man. Yeah. Uh. Bro, Iggy, you was dancing. Did they think you was Chris Brown now? I got my hair blonde and everything. Did you? Yeah. It's a whole, like, storyline with, with our song switching back and forth. You don't, you don't move like that no more, though. I seen you move. <laughs> you, ain't, you move like you're close to 40. <laughs> you ain't seen me move. What, 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 what? You, you seen me, G. You need some CBD on your knees. You, you see me, G. <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie, this is impressive. But I just want—I just want to go into the first little thing so I can understand. Oh wait, no, we gotta stop it because you know they—they they be uh, that is copywritten. We'll fix it. How we gonna fix it? Oh, we gonna cut it out. <laughs> all right, all right, get off of four. Thank you. Yeah, you asked for this. I was talking about Halo app, bro. <laughs> we can talk about Halo after next show. <clears throat> You don't believe I know what it is, do you? You don't. No, you don't, don't trust me. I don't. That's what it is. I'm scared. The truth came out. I'm scared. I'm gonna tell you wow. the truth. I'm. I'm. I'm literally communicating it in emails and marketing to the people, and I don't know about it. That's crazy. I'm. I'm a crappy person. Y'all see how he treated his big brother? Bro, Somebody that will. They will die I'm for him. Little brother, bro. You see? Now he putting a little brother <laughs> card. Come on, look at my eyes, bro. bro. Go to one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. All right, no, seriously, check this out. Next episode, uh, actually, it's going to be next Thursday because next Tuesday, we're, 
Next Tuesday, we're doing something uh, new. Cause we're it's bringing out something new to the show. We're actually going to uh, have our first guest to interview Deals. on our podcast. <laughs> so y'all be able to tune into a live uh, interview. All the interviews oh. won't be live. But, All right, let me uh, ask. Let's ask the people. Mm-mm, no, let's ask. We them. Are, we, it's, I'm still gonna override the people if they agree that they need to be live for the simple fact that, that, that uh. Do y'all want the interviews live? Live? No. Do y'all want the interviews live? No. Or do y'all want us to uh, pre-record them? <laughs> we pre-record them anyway because we, them. we 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 got to. Let's ask the people. I mean, I appreciate you know. You're not gonna give them a chance. I'm gonna give them a chance to say whatever, but I said I was gonna override them. Wow! If they said they they wanted to be live, but I'll take the votes though. I'm curious. Who's live, live, live. <laughs> Y'all want them live? They said Iggy Smooth Boy. Very, very impressive. impressive. All right, Tracy, you doing Don't hate too much. now. She you she was on too- your side about the voice earlier. Now yeah, she I was mine. okay when she was on my side. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now she on mine. Yeah, I don't like that. KP said a mix. We're going to do a mix. All right. Okay. See, all right. So this is what we do. We're going to vet the ones that we trust live. So if they live, you know that we really like. All right. So check this out. If if y'all are agreeing for us to do it live, y'all are agreeing for us to, if we need to, cut the show short in the middle of it. Because we will. Because we We're going to be like, hey, y'all, they lying. Cut the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cap. 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 Yeah, so hey, you know we're gonna do like Apollo. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna buy a big, a big old cap, and then versus like the cane pulling them, we're just gonna put the big hat over them. <laughs> cap. No, we just we just want to make sure that we protect our brand. That we Life on a budget with D. You you, you 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 love you love to protect the brand. Clearly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because gotta, Tracy clearly wants the smoke. Okay. Tracy want all the smoke. Cause she, she Riddler she, said, however Iggy wants to do it. Oh, who said that? Mauricia. Riddler. Now she, now she won't be on your side. No, nah, Riddler. Charles. Chuck. Oh, Riddler said. Yeah. Hold on, wait a minute, Chuck. He said, however it is, go Iggy to wants one. To do it. I don't want to hear you. Okay. Well, let Chuck go to speak. one. Chuck, I thought you and I, you know, we had a brotherhood. If you, well, no, if, Chuck, 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 Chuck. if you his brother, that make me his brother. <laughs> That makes sense. I thought you and I had something special. <laughs> Chuck, come on. You know, we talked about the white van. You know, you know, you you being you being our guy. And you're gonna say whatever Iggy wants. Yeah. I think wow. that was a great That's decision. Crazy. Hey, I, and for the, for those of you, shouts out to uh the Riddler group. That's a that's a Charles. He is a council member inside of the PBS Society, and he writes private banking policies for real, just like us, not for play, for so real. So, if y'all want a private banking policy written and you're part of private banking society, we openly endorse Chuck. Chuck. Well, Iggy does. I don't know if I openly endorse him anymore. I openly endorse uh, a council he's, member he's for sure. Side. Now he want to say, I see, I hear, I don't. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm cutting the show. Zoom in one and uh, in on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we have we be having some good times on our Zooms, on, on our office hours and our, our community Zooms. Y'all think the show live? If y'all think the, <laughs> yeah, if y'all think the show live, you missing the open house, the office hours. The office hours. And office hours are what we do. We do weekly live Q&As inside of the PBS Dollar Club where you can literally ask PBS us anything. PBS Dollar Club. <laughs> ask us anything about the technology, the community, the, the trainings, private banking, marketing, banking, finances, literally. How many times are you going to say banking? However many times we need to because it's private. And it's a blueprint. You dig? <laughs> <laughs> so if if you want access to uh, those office hours so you can literally ask us anything, it's engaging because you, you we can actually, you know, you can speak. You're not just typing the Y'all chat. I only like people that got a missing side tooth. You don't like me then. If you ain't got no missing side tooth, I don't trust you. Damn. You, you, you ain't ate enough candy. Now you now you, now they confused because you just said that was your best friend of years. I ain't got no side gap, but you say you're trusting people, so I'm hey, confused. Hey, take hey take the clues. <laughs> you only, I did. You don't need blues clues to check no, that. No, but I got the blues with them clues. You ain't got you ain't got no missing side too. No. Let me see. Well, you got all your teeth. No, I don't have all my teeth. What you missing? Four. All right, where you missing them? I got four teeth pulled and I had braces. 
I had too many teeth in my mouth. Not a <laughs> oh, you a shark teeth? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Baby shark tooth. <laughs> baby shark. More like a uh, adolescent shark. <laughs> <laughs> So you did have a missing side too? No. After they pulled him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again. I don't trust you if you never had a missing side Oh, tooth. now you say never. Okay, I can respect that. But uh yeah, oh, if you want to Oh, I'm I'm a pbsdollarclub.com. I would never jump off a building and survive. Who sang that song? Mario. Mario. No, no. I don't I don't even know what song it is you reference. Probably oh yeah, Mario sang that song. Y'all, I, let me tell y'all something. If y'all gonna go to the uh, the concert with Monica, Trey songs, Mario, August Alcina, and all them com- comedians from Wild and Out, don't waste your money. It's trash. All right, Mo, what we got next? <laughs> What we got next, bro? Because uh, Halo Agua had to wait till hey, next I Thursday. I went to that show and I was like. <laughs> so should that be one of the back end fails? Hey, that's a bad. <laughs> hey, 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 on the next show, we, we doing that concert tour as a back end fail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> so uh, I put in for back end fails is J, uh, the JP Morgan chase. Uh, would you consider the JP Morgan portion of the back end fail or would you consider. Um, Jace's Jace's part is back in field because when you, you know JP Morgan and Chase are the same thing, right? I know JP Morgan Chase and Jace. Jace is the lady's name. Oh, or Javis her name? or whatever her name, her name is, the lady. Javis. Javis, Javis, Travis. I don't got my contest in that beat look like a Y. <laughs> <laughs> look, Boy, I, was real, I was real confident. I'm you like, see? bro, you that's see? a V, my I guy. was confident. And then it changed. I'm looking at the same nose you're looking at. I'm just trying to figure out how you got Jace out of Javis. This Does it look like it? I don't got no contacts in. So I'm from Mississippi. When I did a little bit more research on her, um, this is not actually not her first time being sued for. Wait, 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 Mogul. Why are your voice changing? I'm confused. Your what's voice on. been changing too. It's a, it's a, it's the, it's the, it's the know. mic. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's like microphone. when you talk. Is, is it when you talking to the mic? You're like, hey, oh, how's it going? Y'all see my side. Welcome too? to the PBS Dollar Club. dot com. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mogul. But when I did a little more information, got a little bit more information on her while we were talking. She, this is not her first time being in uh, something of this nature of like lying to um, companies. Oh, so she been scamming so you all her say life. Allegedly, oh, my she life. been out here finessing. Oh, she, allegedly, she been out here finessing for real. She, so she like, she like the phone calls you get on iPhone. She finessing for real. Like me and y'all, cause I just uh, because with, I know how to. With this newfound information that you have just presented, yeah, that's like that's like that's Chris, a, that's like Chris Cole. That's an absolute fail on her. Yep, that's like Chris Cole. Yep, Chris and Jabril. <laughs> you ain't giving no last name. Muhammad Jones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Put me wrong. But yeah, that's a that's a that's a fair loan. I hope y'all click Javis. that and send that to them. Please. They don't want to see me in court. They don't want to go there. Javis. Hey, that's a fail on her. Yeah, because she she's she she's in the same boat as them. Because it's the you Department of Education she got the first time. <laughs> Are you talking about a habitual scammer? <laughs> They, All right, look, JP wait, 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 wait. I'm they, sorry. No, no, no. They, you got scammed by listen, wait, a, a they, career they, scammer. They scam on a quotidian. <laughs> <laughs> that was good on the daily. <laughs> hey, now if you think if you think it's blasphemy, or you think it's defamation of character. Meet me in court, Jabril and Chris. Yeah, Tracy, the replay's already up uh, inside of the replay vault for Office Hours uh, from earlier today. But yeah, that's a fail for the chick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need to get a ball for you. Hey, hey y'all, y'all know what? We ain't nothing but drunk on water. <laughs> 
refreshed. It's called the Holy Spirit. Ooh. The Holy Spirit speaks nothing but truth. How could Chase have done better? I don't know. Probably you know not what? hired J- her. Hey, J.P. Morgan, <laughs> listen, I apologize. They shouldn't have hired her. I apologize. Y'all um, got scammed. Y'all were even stupider than I thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> how do y'all not do due diligence with all that trillions of dollars? Hey, y'all the biggest bank in the world. On a known scammer. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> she was allegedly a known scammer yeah, I, yeah, on the quotidian. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. And y'all didn't do no due diligence. Y'all the biggest bank in the world. Y'all the biggest Why y'all want to do world? such deep credit checks on people before they you But y'all don't, wanna, y'all don't want to give black folk no money. <laughs> but, but you, you giving a known scammer, scammer 178 million scammer. dollars. Allegedly. <laughs> alleged. See, when you say alleged, it's good. But Chris and Jabril, I didn't say alleged. Didn't say that. Uh, what we got next, Mogul? <laughs> all right, so we're going to go to our last segment. All right, all right, cool. What would Jake and Iggy do? Oh, this right? is my favorite part. So, Jake, we're going to start with you. I inherited $250,000 in a life insurance claim. I'm looking to invest into a company that can give me long time residuals. What would you say I should do first in this process? If you, you, you inherited a million dollars from life insurance? No, a quarter million. A quarter? You. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. two hundred fifty, two fifty. The first thing you need to do is you don't need to do anything with that money. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it in your bank account, and you need to, well, well, I lied. I'm about to say you need to take a dollar <laughs> and join the dollar club, PBS mm-hmm. dollar club. Mm-hmm. They need to take eleven dollars. You need to take eleven dollars, which is like ninety two cents a month. And join the PBS Dollar Club for the whole year. But don't join a uh, 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 Jabril don't Muhammad join. Jones program, <laughs> Block World Order, and don't, damn sure don't get your money to Chris Cole, because you're gonna lose it all, uh, and both of them. And uh, <laughs> and this is just water, y'all. <laughs> this is me pure. <laughs> hey, I told y'all in 2023, I'm calling smoke. Yeah, you did. I told y'all that. I let I let them make it hey. for what 16 months. Yep. I didn't say anything for 16 months. Dick Let Gregory said, well, there's smoke, that's fire. And I got fire. There you go. So they don't want to they, they don't want to go there with me because I'm waiting for one of them to say something just so that I can be able to be like, it's gonna Thank be you. some smoke so in the, the city. Um I will say this though. You got a quarter million dollars in your account. This is what I want to tell you. Um, take eleven dollars, join the PBS Dollar Club. Okay. Get all of the education that you need when it comes to banking, financing, and business. And then take whatever extra little money that you need um, to learn the basic fi- basic financial literacy. You don't need to do anything with that money. You was broke before, act broke with it. And then when you educate yourself, what I would tell people, give yourself a year. Learn, 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 learn all you need to know for a year. And then take another year and learn scammers. Read uh, 48 Laws of... Four day laws of power. Four day laws of power. What's the other one? The fiftieth law and the art of law seduction. And the art of seduction, so that you know people who use manipulative, uh, manipulative tactics um, to get you to believe certain things. And then after that, then then you can be able to make your move. But I think twenty four months of studying, learning, keeping that money in your pocket, staying broke, don't quit your job because you didn't earn that money. Somebody died, and that's how you received it. And then from there, that's how you're able to move forward. But I wouldn't do anything with it. And that's on God and them. Oh, I'll, um. <laughs> so, Iggy, I want to drop a new product on Black Friday. Okay, okay, okay. Right? Oh, Coda said, Coda said, y'all sipping on something other than water. You're Dr. right. Pepper. It's called truth. <laughs> and if anybody uh, feel like, other than the ones I said alleged, I'm talking to two people. If y'all feel like that I've said anything that's out of character, that is not your character, please um, reach out to Bridget Berry of the Ruby uh, Berry Law Firm and go ahead and state your claim. And I'll meet you in court because I'm wait- I've been waiting for y'all two to say something uh, because I can't wait to take you for everything you got. And that's on God now. Go ahead, Mogul. That's what Jake would do. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what that's that's WWJD. Yep. What would Jake do? <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Okay. okay. So, uh, I want to drop a new. Oh product. no, tequila! Give us the bubblies. We don't like tequila. Turn his mic off. Okay. <laughs> they said that. They said it. they did. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what we got, Mogul? All right. So, 
I want to drop a new product on Black Friday. Would you say um, it's too early to start doing marketing now? Or sh- uh, while wow, we're in March now, um, or should I start the rollout plan and the marketing campaign early? Oh, that's a great, great, great question, mogul, big mogul. Uh, and this the is something that I think about on a quotidian. <laughs> 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 so it is absolutely not too early. And I'm going I'm to I'm explain this by giving you a real life in action process of actions that I'm taking. So every time you guys watch this show, every, guy, every time you guys see a post on social media or content, you see this hat on my head. It's been like this for going on a year now. Not once have I said it's for sale. Not once have I said that coming soon. Not once have I said you can go and get them at such and such. Not once have I said watch out for. But we have, when it it comes to marketing, you have what you call phases. And so my phase one was I wanted to test the product in the marketplace and see what type of response I can get from people without saying the hat is for sale. The hat has a deep meaning, a whole story that's connected to it. But I just wanted to see if just by me having the hat on consistently in the marketplace, people would want the hat. I proved that, yes, people do want the hat. And continue wearing it, people continue seeing it. It becomes a part of my brand, part of my perception, part of my presentation. And not only that, people see it consistently in the marketplace. And so when it comes time for me to put a price tag with it, to put a a, a domain, a call to action, and tell people to go purchase it, they they are already going to be familiar with the product. As we get closer to the time that I plan on releasing them, I'll start creating more content going into the next phase of talking about the story behind the hat, why it is I was created. Cause I proved that people wanted it. I proved that people like it. I've worn it consistently. So I got the brand awareness out there and moving into the next phase. Now I can start telling the story behind it. So people can start attaching themselves to the story and, and relating to it and putting themselves in my shoes and being able to understand the meaning of it. And then the next phase will be, you know, launching it as far as giving them an actual domain where they can go purchase. So I absolutely do not think that it's too early to start marketing your product. Now you just have to have a strategic plan where you're rolling out in phases where you're what we call dripping it on people, giving them a taste of what it is you have over a period of time because black Friday that's when the big boys come out. That's when the big dogs come out. And they, they've been planning for this Black Friday since last year. Or two years ago. Or, two years ago, or three years ago. Because th- these bigger companies, they got four and five year marketing campaigns where they dripping it out and, and teasing out over three, four years before they do it. I'm a big, 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 big supporter and big believer in subliminal marketing. I'm a big believer in subliminal marketing and subliminal marketing, sublime, being under the radar, indirect, right? Putting it in in people's face, but not necessarily uh, calling direct attention to it. So I believe that you wanted to be prepared for Black Friday. Go ahead and start getting your market, your community, the, the, the people who you're targeting used to your product. Get them wrapped up in your store. So that way, when Black Friday comes and you give them the domain, you give them a call to action to go purchase, they already know what it is that they're going to be purchasing, and they're ready to purchase it, purchase it, and they believe in it and ready to move forward. And, and it you. came to my attention that y'all didn't know who Jabril Fart Muhammad Jones was. It's 19 <laughs> Keys. I know you <laughs> I just had to clarify that. Jabril yes, Fahd Muhammad Jones is 19 keys. Uh, that's who I was referring right. to. You good? You got any last words, doctor? Oh, yeah. No, I just told you 2023, I was I was telling the truth. For sure. So that's just what it is. Uh, y'all won't hear me explain no more. I gave him enough room to prove me wrong. But listen, our people depend on us yes. to tell the truth. And so that's and that, just that leaves me... To one, if you like the show, you love the show, share with somebody, like, comment. Also, leave in the comment section any hot topics that you'd like us to cover, any businesses that you'd like us to uh, analyze, uh, or any conversation that you would like to see uh, on the podcast. And I'm going to leave you with this this final word. Oh, but we got some interviews we coming, too. Got to leave you with this final word based on today. 
Always be true to yourself and your values. That's right. Transparency means being authentic and genuine, That's right. even when it's difficult. That's right. By staying true to your principles, you can build meaningful relationship and achieve uh, and achieve lasting success. Bro, that was a good last comment. That was a good. That was a good last comment. Bro, did God give you that? Hey. That was pretty good. Ah. Uh, my last words are not that philosophical. My last words are um, when it comes to defending your honor <laughs> and your people and your family and your income, um, always do it in reason and in proper timing. Um, and a lot of times what happens is um, a lot of you think that just being quiet um, uh, is enough. And I am a fan of kind of letting things pass over, but I'm not a fan of letting things slide. Ooh. Passing Bars. over means I'm going to let you make it at this moment. Sliding means uh, uh, I'm going to let you pass over for life. And that ain't happening. When somebody does you wrong, when somebody uh, 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 harms your family or they harm your business, what I would say is take the proper measures to protect yourself and the things that you worked hard for because the only thing that you can never get back, you can get money back, you can get a girl back, you can get a guy back, you can get assets back, you can get, uh, 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 you can get another heart back. You, know, you need to get a new heart. It's called you get transplant. the weight used to be at back. You can get the weight used to be at back because believe me, I got to lose about 20 pounds. But one thing you can never get back is a blemish on your name. Mm. Scripture says that your name is more precious than silver and gold. So you got to protect your name like it's the last of you. Mm -hmm. And don't let nobody play with you. This is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs. This is Iggy. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Peace. They got it, but let's buy some land to build a family that's a grown up flex. And see a black man winning and get so upset. This is generational, inspirational, integrative though. On the rise vertically, working like I ain't made it though. This is for my people. Locker room speeches. Listen while I'm teaching, nails trying like a kiss. Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a re up. Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it. Now we building assets before we splurge our cash. We was talking about the dream, dog. We heard y'all laugh. Now they talking about the team and I heard y'all last I could never take the credit I prefer all cash look laughing at the crib cause I done turned into a bank probably turned into a mogul before I turn into a saint was just a man on his grind and I turned it into great turn my struggle into hustle and you know I'm getting paid let's go